called to order. Madam Clerk. Microphone. In accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act of the State of New Jersey, adequate notice of the budget hearing of the Franklin Township Council was made by the posting on the bulletin board in the municipal building, the township website electronically transmitted to the officially designated newspaper, indicating that this budget hearing will take place in the municipal building council chambers at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. Thank you. Uh, please uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. of the United States. Please excuse my coat. We just had the Ramadan lighting and uh, I was outside and cold. Um, we, uh, next item is public session. Uh, do we have a motion to open to the public? So moved. About to say you're not going to do the roll oh, call. Oh, I missed roll call. Sorry. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Embarrassing. Here. Councilwoman Francois. Here. Mayor Kramer. Here. Councilman Onijaka. Yes. Councilmember Pasazic. Councilwoman Pruitt. Here. Councilwoman Udin. Councilman Vassanella. Here. Councilman Wright. Here. Next item is public session. Do we have a motion to open to the public? So moved. Okay. Move then second it all in favor of opening the public say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. We're open to the public. Um, because this is a budget hearing, I'm going to limit. You can speak about anything to, regarding government, but I'm going to limit it to three minutes. Okay. All right. Alex Strauss, uh, 285 Hazlitt Way, Somerset. Um, I guess I'm not really under, clear on everything regarding the budget, and uh, I guess the mayor made some comments um, about surplus, et cetera. If, I think it was February 28th meeting, regular meeting. Um, basically, how did this, is this unanticipated surplus, and where did it come from, if at all, and why was it, you know, this amount, um, you know, where did, uh, uh, how was that accounted for? Um, also, how is specifically, is it being spent, is it slated to be spent if you're spending it down? Can we get a line item as far as, you know, exactly how it's being spent down, sort of? And also, the American Rescue Plan, what happened there? A township manager had said, well, you were spending some money on training last year. Um, how much did you, how much did you start? with the American Rescue Plan. How much do we have anything left? Is that why there's such a surplus? Um, can we get an accounting there, too? Uh, Township manager shaking his head wildly, but... Uh, I'm incorrect. Well, I'd just like to know. I, I don't know. That's fine. Well, maybe we can get a... a uh, maybe we can get some, some facts, that's all, because I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one who doesn't understand. Okay, so... So the term surplus is a bad term to use. Okay. It's a fund balance. You can think fund of balance. it as the money we okay. have in the bank. Okay. And we use it as a safety net. Okay. Net. It doesn't, a surplus, if the United States government ever had one, would be the extra money per year that they have. This is what we've saved up over time. Right. And last year, council decided we had too large of a surplus, so we wanted to spend it down. In other words, get some of the things that we've been stingy about for years. We spent it down to basically give back to the, the taxpayers so that we're not holding on to their money. But we do hold on to some of it as a safety net. And there are towns that, that mayors I talk to that are envious of our um, surplus because they have to do backflips whenever there's some kind of financial crunch or between bonding or things like that. We don't, we save money by not having to do that. As far as the funds spent on the, with the American uh, Rescue Plan, 
So I, and I'm just going to just clarify some things that you just said, if you don't mind. You need to look at the a municipal budget and municipal finances in funds. We have a water utility. The water utility has a fund. There is a general fund. That's the monies from which the, 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 it is a general fund budget. The things that we're talking about today are generally general fund budget items. The, the fund balance is that money. So the way that in, in New Jersey government accounting, funds are expended in a budget year that ends the fund expenditures for that budget year. But that budget year doesn't close for another two years to allow for things that were procured in the budget year that have yet to be received or paid for. Sometimes there are big expenditures in a municipal budget. So at the end of two years, the amount that's left over returns to the fund balance. So that's where that money is. So the, the township currently sits at a little over $21 million in fund balance. A good portion of that $21 million will be utilized to balance the budget because we're required to have a balanced budget and expenditures exceed revenues by a certain amount depending on what is budgeted in any particular year so that when, but then you regenerate your fund balance from what was left over two years prior. So this year's fund balance regeneration comes from the 2021 budget year. Explain why we wait a year. Well, I just did, because well, you have to pay bills that can, are still accrue. But what about the, can we just get, you know, just out of curiosity, the American Rescue Plan? The American Rescue Plan's funds have been, uh, have not been expended at this point. There is a, right now a plan to expend $2 million on water main replacement in the fourth and fifth ward, which was one of the primary purposes of the American Rescue Plan funds, as well as discussions with Brighton Valley Community College to um, renovate one of the buildings that the township owns to bring us a, a, uh, a uh, satellite um, location for Raritan Valley Community College to provide job training and workforce development as well as um, college courses for those who um, fall into a category would be it lack of, of funds okay. or lack of transportation to get to Branchburg. Okay. That could be anywhere. It's been estimated depending on partnerships with Somerset County with their rescue plan funds between one and three million dollars okay. for that work. This is, you know, the rescue plan funds were not in, in the, the, the intent was not to just take them and spend them right away. That's right. why the federal government gave till the end of 2026 to expend those funds. Okay, so how much, how much wait, do wait, we wait, start wait, up? Wait, wait, three minutes is up. So, so the answer uh, is yeah, if you, you take, have me you out take all my time. Well, I didn't you're take going, all your time. Yeah, you got you three did. minutes. You shake, you shake your hand and then you go on you, and on. The mayor answered you and now I'm yeah, answering. Yeah, you don't want to. Do you, you want an argument or do you want to talk? No, you did. You shake your hand at me, so you obviously don't want to hear me. No, it's not that I don't want to hear you. Do you want an answer? I'm giving it to you. If you want to stand here and listen to me, I will give it to you. If you don't if want you, an answer, then, then, then I'll move on to the end. The answer is, if you want to find it for yourself and not listen to what I have to say, you can go look up how much money the Township of Franklin received. I'll tell you, though, it was $7.7 .7 million. You want to know how much we received? Well, I'm answering you, but you carried on and then went off in a hug. Okay, all right, all right. Back to earth. My turn. Yes, sir. Okay, Michael Bryan, 40 Bryan Court. It was a nice day today, so I went and took a ride around Schoolhouse Road, and I noticed uh, quite a few things that I don't think the council is aware of. I looked at all the real estate signs for warehouses for lease, and the ones, only the ones that I could find total 1.5 million square feet of vacant warehouses and warehouses under construction for lease. I, then I, thinking about B9, that's a quarter of a million square feet with the possibility of going through to Western Canal, Western Road for another six or 700,000 feet. That could be a million square feet. So now we're up to two and a half million square feet. 
Then I look at all the 50 and 60 year old warehouses that are vacant with low ceilings that have the potential for tear down. We are looking in the schoolhouse road area potentially of four to five million square feet of new warehousing. That's unacceptable for the residents of the community. You know, then I hear a conversation, we're going to have noise control, we're going to have, we're going to clamp down on the trucks parking. Town Council could pass all the laws they want about noise control and controlling the trucks. It's unenforceable. The township does not have the police force or the uh, personnel to enforce these laws. The county doesn't, and the surrounding uh, towns do not have it. Unfortunately, the police department has other problems that they have to deal with. I'm not, I'm not going to go on to it. Then I hear about electric trucks. There's no 18-wheel electric trucks in the near future. I have a business relationship with the largest manufacturer of over-the-road trucks, Freightliner. They ran a test on 18-wheelers with Penske and J.B. Hunt. They closed down their electric truck division that's only for straight, straight job trucks, not 18-wheelers. They cannot pull the load. So these diesel annoying trucks are going to be here probably longer than I'm alive. I came to Canal Walk. I liked the area. I liked the town. I saw Colonial Park. I'm 82 years old. I only have 20, 30 years left of my life. And I, I, want, to live, time is I want to live it comfortably, comfortably. There's only one way to curtail this. Being nine has to be stopped. There are ways to stop it. There are orders. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Anyone else? Hi, Terry Thorson, 18 LeBed Drive. Obviously, I'm a member of the Meadows Foundation. For those of you who don't know it, and I wanted to get your attention, mainly because I invited everybody on the council to Santa Claus in December, wildly successful, 127 kids, 75 adults. Nobody from the council was able to make it, so I'm hoping that this Sunday, when we open for the public, all three houses on South Middlebush Road were free. Anytime from one to four, we will have docents in costume who will be taking people through the houses, explaining the history of Franklin. We have houses from pre-revolutionary war, civil war, and Victorian age. The other reason I'm here is I spoke to a former member of the council today who was under the impression that Franklin Township funded these houses. We do all the operating. If there's a bill that's over uh, you could 500 or 1,000, over $1,000, the town will pay for it. But anything else, we pay. Those houses don't have storm windows. They can't have them or storm doors because of the historical significance. The heating bills are immense. The count, former council member also asked me, why don't you have all of those teas and everything you had before? After all, the town pays for them. The town doesn't pay for them. We don't even break even when we have events. This is a free one. We hope everybody will come out, take a look at the properties, see what we've done for them. For over 40 years, we've been maintaining and improving these properties for the town. And we really don't get the attention and the respect that we deserve. Thank you. Anyone else? Jan Brandt, uh, 22 Bryant Court. Um, hi, everybody. First of all, um, I want to thank everybody because you all have really done a lot to help the community and really appreciate it. Um, I wanted to bring something to your attention, and I thought this was perfect at a budget meeting. I know that we've been promised that there's going to be a whole traffic study done for Franklin Township, and I really think it's really important, and I, I think it's even so important that 
some of the, the building and everything that's going on, like how Mike spoke about how many uh, millions of square feet of warehouse that we have that still haven't been leased. But I think until that traffic study's done, um, things have to be stopped. And I want to, um, the mayor had sent me like a warehouse guidance site and, you know, the siting guidance book like way back, like in June when it first came out. And I hope all of you have read that um, warehouse siting guidance. It's an amazing document. And I know it's just guidelines. Um, and But it taught me there's three type of warehouses. There's distribution, distribution facilities, there's fulfillment centers, and there's last minute, last mile for fulfillment facilities or stations. And then it goes on to define them. And when I think about the B9 project, the B9 project either falls under the large fulfillment center or a last minute, a last mile, thank you, <laughs> Joe, a last mile fulfillment center. And that's a big difference because we keep calling it a warehouse. And I'm going to start calling it a fulfillment center because if you look at the definitions of all these three different warehouse types, that's where it falls. It does not fall under a just a traditional warehouse and where that problem why that creates a problem is is in the traffic impact studies of all the warehouses that have come in to be approved those those traffic impact studies go by the IT land use ITE land use code 150 and those are for warehouses that were like two stories high you know the traditional warehouse it wasn't for any high cube warehouse or anything like that and i went in and i looked at the planning code at the planning zone and all the warehouses that are up to be examined and all of them use land ITE land use code 150 and the reason why that's a problem is because when you use that land use code 150 it's really for the old type warehouses from 10 years ago the kind that were two stories high that were small that just stored stuff and maybe had like 70 schoolhouse road which is right down the street from me they have 10 docks 10 bays right on one side and you know maybe they're a couple hundred thousand square feet and they're two stories high they're not these you know higher 50 foot warehouses like what's planning what they want to build on um, schoolhouse road and let me tell you why it makes a really big difference if you use using the wrong code if you according to the ITE manuals tables fulfillment centers can generate seven times more traffic than traditional warehouses so the right code needs to be used that means that everybody who has applied who has done traffic impact studies that their reports are off by that seven times what trucks so that means that what we're bringing into our community what we thought we were bringing into our community was for traditional warehouses it wasn't for fulfillment centers and b9 warehouse that's not a warehouse that's a fulfillment center if you look at the the siting guidelines the new jersey siting guidelines that's what it is. Sorry. Thank you so much, everybody. But and I know it was an intentional mistake. You know, I know that you all. You know, warehouses are a new thing, and these big warehouses are new. So I'm not blaming you all. It's just something that I recently found out, and I really wanted to make you all aware of it. So it's I, I totally don't blame you for doing it. It's just ignorance. You know. Thank you. Sorry. Thank, thank you. Marlon Kwan, 28 Jay's Corner. I'd like to piggyback on what Jan was talking about because <clears throat> um, the warehouses that we're talking about, these B9 type warehouses, 60 bays. So if you multiply that by seven times what the traffic study for that particular site would give you, and they're, they're allowed to just give you a traffic study minimally for what they think will produce on that warehouse. And so when you multiply their results seven times, you're talking about an enormous amount of traffic. So that's why it's important to distinguish between a traditional warehouse and a fulfillment center. Having said that, I'd like the council to address the issue of both PM 2.5, which is particular matter 2.5 those come out of those trucks that I was just talking about and if you multiply those trucks sevenfold right it increases the potential for cancer which has been proven and there's a lot of reports out there if you just google PM 2.5 you'll get the Google results what that does is creates cancer 
and the cancer is contagious for children and for older adults. And guess what, folks? The people across the street at Summerfield have young children, and the people at Canal Walk have more adults. And those are the two most vulnerable pieces of our population that can get this cancer. So what I'm asking the council to do is consider in this budget not only the traffic study, which would be an incomprehensive traffic study from what I understand, right, of all of the traffic within this area, but also to do a pollution study with, with metrics related to all of the warehouses, just, just like the traffic study, to encompass all of the traffic and how their output will affect the air quality in Franklin Township. And then lastly, also to include in the budget a noise study for encompassing all of the expected traffic from everything that these other people have said. Lastly, I would like to also say that the council really needs to take a stand and say, let's postpone the B9 hearing because we have the ability to now do these three studies and until those three studies are done, we cannot move forward. That's what I'm requesting from the council. We have absolutely no power to do that, none whatsoever. A, a judge would throw that out in a second. We, have, we can't, mm. we can't, you're, you're making something up. You're giving us powers that we just don't have. That we, well, if you, Mayor, with all due respect, if you do those three studies, I will almost inevitably guarantee that you'll find that this, the quality of everything that I'm talking about will diminish in Franklin Township. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, we're not going to, the council comments is on the agenda. Mr. Vornlocker, did you have anything? I have nothing to add to anything that's been said already. Okay. then. We're gone to the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, do we have a motion to close to the public? So moved. Second. Mo moved and seconded. All in favor of closing to the public say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. <clears throat> motion is carried. We are now on to the departmental presentation. Mr. Vornlocker, it's yours. Good evening. Um, Mayor and Council, uh, the first budget to be discussed is the uh, human resources and health insurance budgets. Um, I have with me our human resources officer, Raven Williams. Um, I, I will just um, bring to your attention the 2023 budget for the HR department is a proposed at $138,450. That's an increase of $2,950 um, with the bulk of that increase in line um, 44, which is an increase of $2,000. That $2,000 reflects the two organizations that the township joined in 2022, the African American uh, Chamber of Commerce of New Jersey and the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of New Jersey, which I think that has been a, a, a actually, a, both are very good organizations, not only for uh, assistance in our ability to recruit candidates for all of the positions that we have open in the township, but also for training purposes. Um, we've been able to uh, take advantage of some of the training that both of those organizations offer. So are there any questions on the HR budget? I think we also made the decision based on diversity inclusion. And, and that was one of the reasons why we joined both of those organizations. If there are no questions, I'll move on to the health care budget. The health insurance budget is proposed at $7,797,850. That's an increase of $8,500 over the 2022 budget with the $8,500 increase in line 29 other contractual services. 
that line increase reflects the every other year requirement of each municipality to conduct a GASPI, what number? 40, GASPI 75, GASPI standing for uh, Government Accounting Standards Bureau. Um, every other year we have to do a full report that's done by an outside firm that is a, uh, a projection of future costs for retiree benefits. And then it, the year last year was just the roll through year so that it doesn't, it's about half the cost. This is a full year review for the accountant to look at and that's why the increase in that line. Um, the, the health benefits line 092 reflects a, a, the same amount as 2022. The reason for that is while there was an increase of $300,000 in health care benefits last year, we were able to absorb that $300,000 increase in, uh, from monies from the reserve uh, where employee contributions are deposited. Um, that's not a forever fund, but there was enough to make it uh, flat for 2023. So Bob, is that um, an assumption or is it a fact that there's not going to be an increase? There is an increase is what I'm saying. There was, there was an increase. That is last in, year. There was an increase in the 2023 costs for health care benefits of $300,000 over the 2022 budget. However, we were able to absorb that increase from funds from reserve, uh, the employee contribution reserve. My, my anticipation right now for 2024 is that if we stay on the current path with our health care benefits, we'll probably see a much larger increase than the 11% increase that we experienced this year. That we are beginning exploration into alternate um, providers of health care benefits other than traditional, where this year we have Aetna, last year we had Aetna, in years prior we had Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield. We're looking into things that are similar to our joint insurance fund for health care benefits as a possible move to a health insurance fund um, similar to that which the Board of Education is a member of. So if, if we can realize savings and provide um, the same benefits, there would be a a good motive to move. Anyone else? I have a question. Just for my knowledge, what's a health insurance fund? So we're a member of a joint insurance fund for our, for our liability and, and casualty insurance. GIF. The, a GIF, right, the GIF. Um, well, there are HIFs, health insurance funds, where anywhere from a half a dozen to a couple hundred, in the case of board, the board of the, the school board HIF has a couple hundred members. Um, you know, there are, there are, there's several HIFs throughout the state of New Jersey for municipality and county government. There's a Somerset County HIF. The only members currently in the Somerset County HIF are county related agencies, Somerset County Park Commission, Somerset County Government, Somerset County Library, um, and the, basically it's, it's pooled funds where there's an assessment and there's a, uh, there's a carrier, in the case of the Somerset County HIF, the carrier is Aetna. Um, the school board HIF carrier is Aetna. Um, and that, so it, it functions very similarly to a joint insurance fund, but for healthcare insurance as opposed to liability insurance. Instead of just contracting our own in, as a municipality, we would join, potentially join, could join. Could join a HIF, correct. Larger members. Okay, thank you. So that, that's now being explored by our health care broker. Um, we're going to begin discussions with that probably end of next month in anticipation of 2024. This will be our first if we go that route. It would be, yes. And, and the the preliminary discussions with our broker have been very positive. He feels very positive about the possibility. Do? Uh, yes, correct. Anyone else? Okay. okay. Thank you, Raven. Thank you. Good night. Next, we will have our collector, Rosanna Gutierrez. There she is. 
We don't have a collector. Yes, we do. Collector of revenue. It's in there. She collects things other than taxes, water bills. Collector of revenue. So the collector's budget is proposed at focus here. Wait, I thought we were talking about the right about one. Tax, the collector. tax collector. Is that what it is? What tax collector? Yeah, no, we don't have one labeled collector. We have tax collector. We're looking yes, for. Yes, I'm sorry. It's tax collector. That's tax the collector. One. Yes, okay. and I'm looking for her budget, which I must have somehow accidentally X'd out of. I will go here. There. And I will open it. Yes. Tax collector 2023 is what it's titled, and the collector's budget is proposed at if i can do this with one hand and scroll proposed at nineteen thousand eight hundred and sixty six dollars <laughs> which is an increase of three thousand eight hundred and twenty two took me longer to get there than actually the amount of money in this particular budget the bulk of this budget you see is in the first line which is printing obviously the printing of water bills and the printing of tax bills and the postage that's associated with it that's to mail out the tax bills and mail out the water bills and there is an increase of $1,130 in that line, and that is because postage is going up, and likewise, printing costs have gone up. The line below that, which if I can scroll here and coordinate my fingers, is for maintenance of other equipment. Some of you may recall last year, um, there was a purchase of a new machine in the collector's office for folding and stuffing of the envelopes. Um, that was originally purchased with a, a, a service plan for that first year. This reflects the service plan for that year, for this year, for that machine. Any questions on the tax collector? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rosanna. Yeah, actually, could I get a call every time the taxes are due? Because I, I have forgotten more than once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the mayor. Come on, please. <laughs> shall, shall, shall we publicly shame you here tonight? <laughs> Is that what you wish? Well, I'm almost up to $50 in, in late tax fees. <laughs> The, the mayor has shame, paid late shame, fees. Shame, he shame, has. Shame. It, it is shameful. It is shameful. And then he blames me. <laughs> Somehow I'm responsible for paying his taxes. Okay, now we understand. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, Cindy? Thank you. I, you're the, I, I meant to bring that. Uh, you're a blessing in disguise there. I kept looking at her, and I was like, who is that in the back? <laughs> <laughs> um, the next yeah. budget is, uh, for me, I just couldn't is Cindy Bellinger, our uh, qualified purchasing agent. And uh, we have a purchasing budget that is proposed at $110,200. That's an increase of $1,400. All of the increase is in line one postage, as I just stated in the previous budget. Um, the United States Postal Service increased postal fees, so therefore we have an increase in that line in the budget. This is postage for um, all of the things that the township sends out. There we have it. Um, and also included in um, Cindy's budget is uh, is one office related uh, item and that's copy paper is budgeted in her budget and as you see um, that's flat and all the others are related specifically to her and her continuing education requirements and memberships and the required organizations for purchasing agents so are there any questions on the purchasing budget? Thank you for keeping it flat as much as you can. Other uh, than the United States Postal Service. Right. Yeah. Yeah, within <laughs> your control. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. And next we will have municipal court. And we have our court administrator, Kayla Martinez. 
And the municipal court budget is proposed at $32,300. That reflects a $4,700 increase. There are some minor ups and downs in the municipal court budget, um, but there is one increase of note, and that's $5,500 in the professional consultant and specialized services. This is the line in which we budget translation services and there's been an increase in cost and there's been an increase in need in the municipal court for translators and thus the increase in, in the budget. Sure. I recall one of my early budget hearings is when we got the service online. I think it was like a discussion several years ago. Language line. Language, Language line, which is generally used by the police department. Okay. So it wasn't used by the court. I we do use it. They they use it in the court in the in the court office setting, but in trials, we need an action. They have to have a person there, yeah. right? Okay, I just wanted to connect yeah, yeah. those dots. All right, thank Mo you. Most of the language line costs are associated with police, police. dispatchers. Okay. And when a call comes in, they can link in a, a translator immediately online, shared line on on an incoming call if they can't understand the person calling same services is used in the court when someone calls into the court but um, we also have several spanish-speaking employees not, not any well yeah we, we have we have kayla now i should say yes correct um but uh um the, the bigger cost is when you need to have a physical trial person. with a physical yes. person in the courtroom that costs much more they've been showing up hasn't been any problem no it's great so the police guard that's there, is that in a salary budget? Is it in the court salary budget or um, police budget? You're talking about police officers working in the court for security is right. out of the police budget. Still holding court on Zoom? Yes. But we, Not do back have, yet. we do have in person one or once or twice a month. Okay. See yourself going back to in person. Myself personally, I or would just love court it. in general. I don't think so. It's really? going gonna, gonna to be hybrid. Because, because of COVID or because they just want to do I that? I think they want to move in that. From what I hear, it, I think they want to move in that direction. Hmm. But they still give us the option for in person for trials and complicated cases. And so there's been responsiveness to, to those who need to come in person. Yes. I know in South Jersey there was an issue. Yes. Sure. Yeah, no, we're, we're good. Okay. <laughs> I promise. The administrative office of the court, from what I understand, is founded um, in, in for many purposes of municipal court, much more efficient and much more convenient to um, defendants to hold virtual court. And that's why I think that what they learned through COVID is that um, they have the ability to do this. The technology allows them to um, provide for confidential discussions between attorney and defendant and uh, you know, prosecutor and, uh, and attorney um, so that and with breakout rooms and Zoom and things like that so that uh, with the secure nature of online services, uh, they can provide that without having you know, in-person court all the time there are trials that require and that's that's really what happens there are certain types of trials that just require in person that oh. hybrid reflected in kind of these budget there's a lot there's less being spent on things is that a reflection of the hybrid like people just physically aren't like for what line I'm just I'm just looking at either janitorial or so janitorial was something that that Kayla added a couple years ago to the budget yeah, that was it was really just for cleaning supplies within the courtroom and people sometimes like to keep their offices clean and we allow them to purchase that type of cleaning materials above and beyond the janitorial services I was curious if the hybrid so, made it no so not in where's the zoom fee there is none there's a I, within within yeah I'm just saying there's there's it's literally three hundred dollars conferences and meetings is probably where I'm guessing it's budgeted. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah, not, not much exciting here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm not against the Zoom thing, but let me, if there's any kind of trial, and I know municipal courts, courts trials tend to be kind of short, simple, but is it definitely in person if there is a trial situation? If everyone agrees to a, depends on the case. If it's a careless driving ticket or a cell phone ticket and everyone agrees to do it on Zoom, it's done on Zoom. We can do it on Zoom. But anything complicated like a DWI or, you know, a more complicated case with multiple defendants or anything like that has to be done in person. Okay. And, and so this is coming from the Supreme Court. Okay. No, I'm, yeah. I'm not against it. I just want to I'm just explaining that it's not really our decision. And when you say they, I just, there's a few people referring to they're leading in that, or that, who is they? Is that the Supreme Court you're referring to, or the state? Uh, the Supreme Court, uh, the Administrative uh, Office of the Courts has dictated that, that trials and, and court proceedings be held virtually, that that's a, okay. per, that's a permitted it, function of the court. We're talking about Jersey or federal? New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah, okay, just wanted yeah. to, so Jersey is really moving in that direction. Well, understand that the municipal through. court operates under the hierarchy of the court system in the state with the Supreme Court the highest, and I, we take our direction from the administrative office of the courts. Kayla has more than one boss. I'm not the only one. I understand. Okay. Um, thank you for the clarity. Well, I would say if I got a ticket because I was driving while texting or my tail light was out and I had to go to work and I could do a Zoom via court, that would be a good thing for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Yeah, I would have that, to take off for work. That's exactly yeah. the circumstance. And most circumstance. people do it during their lunch break. Yeah, right? yeah. That's it's, exactly it's the circumstance. It's better for our constituents. The, yeah. the other thing is that this, and this was something that kind of blew my mind, that during early, in the early uh, time of COVID, the, the state developed the, uh, the system for if, say, you, say you got that ticket, what, you got a careless driving ticket. You could go into the state system and you could begin the plea bargain process online. You filled out the information as to why you felt you were deserving of a plea bargain. The prosecutor then in their office, not having to come here to Franklin, but sit in their law office, would could review all of the entries made by those people whose tickets were due and were looking to have either a plea bargain or a not guilty. And the prosecutor could make the recommendation directly from the system to the judge. The judge reviews the prosecutor's recommendations and makes a ruling without anyone ever even having to get on a Zoom meeting. So the process has really been streamlined to the benefit of the, the citizens because let's be honest, the municipal court generally handles minor offenses. They, these are not people who are hardened criminals. These are people who got a parking ticket. And I think the court recognized that there can be a significant inconvenience to having to come to an in-person court session. So the, these, the technology just, I mean, obviously yes. COVID forced it, COVID but forced once it. they determined that this really did work very well, well, if it, now if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right. Right? right? So that's pretty much what happened. Well, I remember, not that I ever got a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. I can remember going to court and they canceled the court and I had to go there, take off work, and then mm -hmm. I get there and it was canceled. Yep. Not that I that ever happened to be, but I remember. No, <laughs> you, were, you were a witness. <laughs> <laughs> I was a witness. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it is just, it's, it, it's, it's it, I'm sorry, moving it forward. It sounds much more yeah, efficient. It is. And yeah. just, but, but if somebody wants, quote, the right to face their accuser, they can. You Absolutely. said both parties have. Yes. Now, Absolutely. It sounds like a good formula. Yep. It sounds like a good formula. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Kayla? Okay, great. Right. Have a good night. Thank you, Kayla. I don't know who comes next. Economic development. So if the council will bear Everyone. with me, I think when I hit X here, Everyone leaves. Oh, no. Time. See, oh, she no. left. This is actually a budget, though, that Kayla doesn't handle. There is another budget under the municipal court tab for prosecutor. Those are the, the amounts are set by council, by contract, in the reorganization meeting. This is just a $76,000 contractual item to pay our contract, uh, our contract uh, prosecutors. So not really anything that Kayla has anything to do with more 
that all of you up there have something to do with. And the next one will be economic development, who snuck in there next to me. There are two budgets that we will discuss here. Economic and Historic Commission will do economic first. The economic development budget will show a significant decrease. We touched on this at the last budget hearing um, when we had Mr. Healy here to discuss the planning and zoning bud uh, budgets. Um, the budget this year proposed for ec uh, economic development is at $15,500, a decrease of $100,175. That $100,000 uh, decrease is monies that we had budgeted for consulting services for economic development that we have moved into the planning budget to pay for a, a planning and traffic study as we've discussed at several council meetings and which was raised earlier. Um, by one of the public members speaking. Um, so that, that was discussed last week in the planning budget. So are there any questions about the economic development budget? This is our memberships in things like the Somerset Business Partnership and the, the Chamber of Commerce and conferences and, and association dues are, are make up the bulk of this. I have a question on the traffic uh, study. Uh, <clears throat> the county is going to do a study, correct? Uh, spending a couple of million dollars. And that's an Easton Avenue safety Eastern study. Avenue. Yeah. That's all. That's limited so, to uh, Easton Avenue. Okay. Is that going to be any coordination between that? So my guess that? is that based on my conversations with the with the county engineer regarding the uh, the county safety study for um, Easton Avenue. Um, that that will not be done in a time frame that would be beneficial to us in our planning and traffic study. So while it might, what what probably will happen, to be perfectly honest with you, is um, components of our study may help the county in their safety study on Eastern Avenue, not vice versa. I had a conversation with the county engineer last week about that study, and that they. We'll have ours done before theirs. Okay. So, historic commission is a very quick one. Ordinarily, we would do the historic commission under the planning and zoning budgets, but since Mr. Dominic is the staff liaison to the historic commission, I thought it would be a little bit more appropriate that he could address any questions that we had on historic. Historic is budgeted at $1,000. It was budgeted at $1,000 last year, um, and it's the purpose of the budget for the historic commission is there are statutory requirements for training of new members. So. Do we have any questions about the Historic Commission? Yes, ma'am. Is that the only thing? So we have to have the budget item to train yes. members? But that, that, that's it. That's the only that's the only. That that's the only, for the Historic Commission, that's the only expense that they incur. OK. Thank you, Mr. Dominic. Vince to his friends. Obviously, we're not friends. <laughs> Next up, we have recreation with Director Bo Burtis and Deputy Director Wendy White. Two budgets again, recreation and senior transportation. Should probably have done senior transportation first since that one's contractual with Somerset County, but we'll do recreation first. Okay. Just shrink it down a little bit. Okay, this year's recreation budget is, now I shrunk it down too much that I have to put my glasses on, 105,000. 875, thank you, Councilwoman Pruitt. Um, that's a $2,630 increase over the 2022 budget, but there's some shuffling of funds among budget lines here that I think will make sense once I tell you what it is for. 
Um, the other contractual line, which is 029, which shows a decrease of 23,000 from 23,800, is the line in which we paid off-duty police officers for teen rec at the middle school. Since we no longer hold teen rec at the middle school, and teen rec is now held at the youth center, and there is staff, uh, full-time staff and part-time staff for those purposes, we no longer have police officers, and we've also now developed the relationship with the Community Relations Bureau that they're uh, regular attendees at, for program-related issues at the uh, youth center, that we no longer hire off-duty police officers for teen rec. But what we did was we took that $23,000 that was removed from police coverage and moved it into the recreation supply line, which is monies to fund program materials for the new youth center. So that the money is from one line to the other, so it doesn't reflect any significant increase in the recreation budget, just a different use of the funds. That's good, because I was looking at this thinking, <laughs> I'm not understanding. See, we this. snuck it in there for you. <laughs> it's there. Most of, and I will tell you that most of the funds for uh, program-related uh, um, funding for the youth center is, is really coming from outside providers in certain cases who are providing programs at uh, reduced or no cost, and also from the Recreation Trust, which is fees, fees, um, fee based. Fee supported, thank you, fee based. Um, so that that's how we are able to provide most of the programs at the youth center. However, Material costs for programs is one of those things that has increased since we've, you know, increased the amount of programs available to the to the youth, especially because of the, you know, obviously it's it's a six day a week operation. So the things that are needed to the physical things that are needed to run those programs are the things that would be budgeted out of the recreation budget. So this would include like. The art supplies. Exactly. Art exactly. Yeah. Things. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Basketballs for the basketball program. Um, volleyballs for the volleyball program, and things like that. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, I have two questions. Well, not a question, but I like your budget. Uh, the recreation department is second to none in the state, and I think we would all agree about that. The programs that we put in place to our little itty bitty budget does wonders for Franklin Township. From the basketball program, to the seniors, to everyone else, something is always going on. So I definitely want to say thank you. Let's go around the corner and look at the bulletin board, all the flyers they have here yeah, in this building. Exactly. It's a, it's a whole wall. Yeah, I, I walked past there last night. And I said, "Wow, I didn't know that was going on." Oh, wow! There, there, I didn't know there's, that was going there's, on. there's a lot, so of, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Frankly, a lot, a lot of things happening yeah, here. There absolutely, are. absolutely. For the seniors too. Yeah. Yes. Well, Kimberly has the youth. I have the seniors. <laughs> you do. So, where, what line item, if any, on this? What I'm looking at for for all of those lines. I mean, there's the things that that um, cover like the supply lines, recreation. So, but uh, remember too that because the seniors pay fees into it. There's additional the fees that are, are the, so those fees are turned around to use to you know, fund a future program. Um, that's, the, that's why we have a recreation trust. It's kind of money in, money out. The money that comes in is then turned around to pay for future programs. So that's why there's, Sorry. we're able to keep this budget at the number that it's at. Otherwise it might be you know, half a million dollars. Okay, um, so I guess the, the two remaining question is to that point with the recreation supplies, I know the last advisory council, the seniors expressed concern, and now they have, I guess, pocketbook strings to their supplies. <laughs> Sorry about that. The budget line item that we have in there is under recreation supplies as well, and that's that $27,000 that um, for the clubs. Now, the other part of that, so the clubs are separate, to the fee-driven yeah. classes. So those are the, the fee-driven classes come out of the rec trust, and that $27,000 is reflected, I believe, in that. Um, on a sub-page, I guess. Okay. And then the second one is, like, I imagine the answer is that it's probably in a capital budget somewhere, but 
um, all of the the requests for improvement. Those were all handled at the last council meeting okay, that, that you I, missed. Yeah. All right, you don't so, say that. No, I, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, but but, but I, I'm all not. of that all of that material is available, <laughs> and you should review because okay. there was a number of things, including replacement of the kitchen floor mm -hmm. and and other items in the senior center. Um, that were as a and, and it was raised as a result of requests through Bo um, from the seniors. And the, and this is a more of a comment or like a rhetorical question rather. Um, recognizing you know being fiscally responsible, but to Councilman Wright's point, you know all of our programming is really important to our community. Is this budget? reflective of what we could be doing and what could a budget look like a little bit more in there like what could we be expecting? that's we don't have to answer it but if it's and, so and, great and, and, it, and it's sort of a rhetorical question but I, i'll answer a part of it there are sufficient funds that if we were to find something that we wanted to do for whether from from infant through senior that was a worthwhile program there are sufficient funds to run those programs good to know and a lot of that we can we run out of the trust. Okay. I have a question. Oh. Yeah. Is, uh, most of the time we use a um, consulate hall. Actually, we get confused. We don't know who actually is responsible for that hall. Is it the Board of Education or your department? So, so the the answer, Councilman, is that the Board of Education owns the building. Yes. And because there's a custodian required in that building after hours because of the boiler, yes. and, it, and it's a, not a requirement of the Board of Ed or the township, it's a state requirement that, it, that a custodian be there, um, they, they are the owner and the rent for that building goes to them. Yeah. Okay. Um, we process it, take funds to rent it, so we're, we're like the rental agent, all right? So if you want to rent the building, you come to us, you pay us the money, and then we send the money to the Board of Education. But the requirements that, that are, regulate the building are those that the Board of Education is, is under the requirement by state law to do what they do with that building, how they do it, I should say, the requirements for rental. I know you're doing a very good job. My people are complaining that they're enjoying it. Thank you. Thank you. And one, one question there. Oh, okay. Charles. I'm go going. ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I'm glad to hear what you said before, that there is money there. Obviously, it's limited. But seriously, if somebody from the public, because once in a while, not in a negative way, it'll be like, hey, why don't you guys have Baba? You know, I was in this town. What is the most practical way that they, a person or a group can come and and you know, should they write a proposal? Should they just call you? Because so what I, that, I get hear these, yeah, I feel these calls a, a lot. And what I always do, I, obviously, we have an open door policy. Um, I encourage people to give me a call. There's also the contact form on the website um, that people give ideas, uh, and then we'll start to explore those. And then typically, what I do is I'll I'll meet with the, whoever the person is that has the idea. We'll kind of start to thresh out those ideas and see if there is truly a need for it or a desire for it from multiple people. Um, and then we'll move forward. I actually met with a gentleman today that we're going to hopefully start some new programming um, in the spring that, based on that exact same concept. Or stop by the office, come on in, we'll have a chat, and then we'll figure out what we need to do. And a lot of times it's easier for us to do the administrative piece and then let that person facilitate the program as either a volunteer or an employee, a seasonal employee of the township. So depending on what it is you're proposing, they may play into it, they may not. But I would imagine the more information, not tell, come in to tell you what to do, but the more information they could bring um, exactly. to you so you understand what they're doing. And if there is a need, then the better for... Exactly. And a lot of the times what will happen is, you know, obviously we do this for a living, so we can help kind of walk through some of the things, that the, 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 the challenges that we may have, and then we'll figure out solutions together. And then it becomes, as a teamwork kind of thing, then there's a vested interest by both parties, and then we can move forward. Thank you. It's good to know, and I'll pass that along. Absolutely. The, the other thing, Councilman, if you want to, to simplify things, to start the ball rolling, because I see it pretty much on a daily basis with inquiries, is you just simply have to go to the website, and there's an inquiry. There, there's a, a, um, a 
contact form that's very basic to fill out and you can put in information and it goes right to Bo, it goes right to me, and right depending on the, you know, for recreation purposes, that's where it goes to these two people and, and, and myself, but for every department has one. If there's questions or there's a, a suggestion, I mean, I, we got one just this afternoon for recreation, they come in pretty much daily. Um, and that's a way that, you know, is it possible that we could have, um, you know, mahjong classes for seniors or whatever, right? I mean, uh, listen, is, that's a, you can make that inquiry to the recreation department and someone will get back to the person when, when, with an answer. So yeah, that's, you can start it off that way too. Excellent. Same, same thing for youth. Youth, seniors, anybody? Anything. Anything recreation umbrella? Yep. Okay. I appreciate your open-mindedness with that. Thank oh, you. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So, any other questions on the recreation budget? If not, then I just put up the senior transportation budget. This is a fixed budget. Um, uh, it is an increase of $1,776, not because Somerset County is um, patriotic, but because it was probably exactly 2% of 88635 which is what the budget was last year. Um, and this is to provide um, senior transportation to our senior center um, for those who have no transportation. Um, this is where Somerset County provides the driver and scheduling of the transportation and we provide the bus. It's our bus that they drive with a Somerset County transportation driver. Is the services we have still the need Yes, I think so. Um, we we did see a little bit of an increase uh, post COVID, um, and they've been able to manage them all, so we haven't had any complaints. At there is other transportation that Somerset County provides in addition to transportation to the senior center. Um, for those in need, it also provides transportation to doctors' offices and grocery shopping as well. Um, so that's that's all. Yeah, that's all what I was thinking about. To what, what we have here, and I haven't heard complaints. I've just yep. heard people ask, "Do we mm -hmm. do that?" Sure. And can, how good do we do it? And quite frankly, I, I don't know because the post-COVID is now a whole different. Um, and typically, we'll world have and movement. Approach us, and then we'll help to sort of usher them through that process. To often. Okay, any other questions for Bo or Wendy? If not, we're going to move on to IT. I do. One more. Go, ahead, go for it. <laughs> I almost got away. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's related to transportation, um, and I know this is like a fixed cost, um, but again, is there anything that we could be doing to support some of the seniors getting transportation, have stuff that's around dusk and some folks that are uncomfortable driving, like setting up a park and ride situation at the different event here? Um, the short answer is I'm sure we can do something. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I would hesitate to answer that wholly Understood. because I want to kind of thresh it out in my head to figure out, but it's something that if, now that it's on my radar, we'll definitely address it. Just thinking about programming, mm -hmm. obviously they schedule before dark, but sometimes if they have that option, would they have Schedule more things in the certainly together. and and similarly to like you know we, we have the event on Friday that kind of thing the the, the talent show shameless plug there. seniors got talent I'm a judge <laughs> <laughs> okay all right alrighty moving on to information technology I will. <laughs> And we have our IT director, Bob McQueen. Um, we'll jump right into the, uh, the operating budget for IT, and then we'll get into capital. See, I'm not used to Already, I'm going on here. <laughs> you get me a mouse and I don't listen. Um, so the uh, IT budget is proposed at $255,706, and that is an increase, I'm sorry, 
take that back. That that's a subtotal line. Three hundred eighty-six thousand three hundred six dollars. That's an increase of seventy-seven thousand four hundred seventy-three. The bulk of that increase is in that line right above that I was reading. Software licensing, where there is a sixty-eight thousand nine hundred seventy-three dollar increase um, over last year. Um, there's some smaller increases, $20,000 in professional consultant and specialized services, but a, a decrease in maintenance of equipment, and uh, so for a net increase of 8500 on that subtotal contractual services line. So I certainly would imagine there might be some questions on this particular increase in, in software, and Bob can certainly answer your questions if you have them. have software, you will have software licensing fees. Well, that, that's an absolute fact. That. And, and so, and, uh, and so I'll, I'll cut to the chase here. Some, some, if not all of this increase, and Bob will smack me and tell me I'm wrong. We enter into multi-year software licensing agreements to save money on many of our software programs. And this year happens to reflect when we had multi-year licenses, multi-year licenses expire and now have to be renewed. Um, you know, some of our software, like um, um, Office 365, are are not inexpensive, but it's kind of hard to run a business without email and word processing and database manipulation. <laughs> so th this is the cost of doing business. To be perfectly honest with you, and. Uh, what one of the things, and and this this ties in, is it's not just software, but it's also the protection of our network. Um, cybersecurity is a huge issue right now in in this world that we live in, and cybersecurity is not cheap, and you have to spend money to protect your network. And we do a very good job. In fact, um, the GIF that we spoke of earlier. Um, has uh, now a cyber, well, there is a cybersecurity task force within the Central Jersey Joint Insurance Fund. Then the, the um, municipal excess liability GIF has a cybersecurity um, committee, and there have been several initiatives both at the statewide level and our local Central Jersey GIF regarding cybersecurity. That's those classes you all have to take. Um, there's also now beginning tomorrow for us um, for um, that we are required to undergo an audit of all of our network um, our network and our um, our security systems within our network um, throughout the town this it starts tomorrow um, Bob has a meeting with the vendor that was hired by the GIF to conduct this risk assessment, risk assessment um, for all of the member GIFs because I, this is another thing. When you're a member of a GIF, <clears throat> you share liability, for lack of a better term, with your member municipalities. So the GIF as a whole is requiring that this be done for all the members of the GIF. This is part of, this is not something that we're being assessed to have this done. The GIF is doing this as part of their responsibility. And I was, I'm a fund commissioner on the GIF, but I'm also the co-chair of the cybersecurity task force for the local Central Jersey GIF. And we've tried to get ahead of the curve here um, the, the vendor that does all of that testing and does that training for you, and then you, get, you know, sometimes we have phishing tests that go out, that vendor was first used by our town. And when we, so we went to the GIF and said, this is something that every town should be doing, that's the vendor that's now providing it for the entire GIF. Um, they're actually a local town, lo located right here in Franklin Township, um, D2. So th this is some of the costs associated with this as well. Because the, the cost, if you don't do all of these things, is far greater than the budget of the IT department here. Yeah, well, our federal government got hacked. Yeah. So it's very easy. 
hospitals are getting hacked. Everybody. There are lo there are lo there are local municipalities who have I've had been held that. ransom and had to pay ransom um, on a on a cyber attack. A local, it would be. So, so, Bob, I have a question on line item 028. Mm -hmm. um, I see a pattern of uh, increase in the last couple of years. Where are we spending that money? And that's to bring in outside firms to do the things that we were just talking that's, about. That's, that's, that's consultants to bring in exactly penetration tests of our network and things like that, which now the, the recommendation is that a minimum of um, annually a penetration test of your network be done. That, that costs a minimum of $10,000 just to have the, 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 the one-day test. So that's, that's the type of thing that's being done with that line. Nowadays, you got to spend money to stay safe. Yeah, that's why we pay for insurance, and this is in, in many ways insurance. But it's also to make us function. This is these are the costs of a functioning government right here, as far as technology is concerned. And I'll I'll just add that um, we across the board saw a three to ten percent increase on softwares. So the maintenance that we pay went up by three to ten percent on almost every single one of those line items. And we have an entire spreadsheet of all the software, what it cost, how it's divided out. Um, we saw that three to ten percent increase across the board this year. And that also goes for the contractual services. They're going up. Cost of living is going up. Services and, and vendors are costing more. Okay. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. I, I, well, I think my questions might have more to do with capital, but... We're going to get to the capital budget next. But if something's not on there, should I bring it up now? I, 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 what, what particular... I didn't look at it, so I may... I'm wondering, because um, I know I'm looking around here, and I know the mayor and my friend here to the right, Mr. Wright, was actually, uh, before we got on council, actually literally helped build this... Uh, TV center here and a booth in the back and everything. You can hold your hold your thoughts. <laughs> oh, Let's okay. Because I was. See, you just got to tell us what's. I was going to say I didn't get a chance. There's a uh, lot. We got a lot of attachments here. Happy to get to that one. So I'd be okay. So the 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 overall. So it, on the screen on your attachment, it's the it's the yellow column. This is a five year capital plan. This is for there year is. four. So under under 2023. This is the, um, the capital projects planned for 2023, as well, and the total here um, for the township is, I've just highlighted it on the screen, but $567,000. Um, you, can, you can scroll through here, and, and Bob, do you, have, you can use my computer, certainly, and if there's questions on anything, there's also in this budget for IT purposes, $105,000 in water capital and $25,000 in park and open space security cameras. Um, some of the things that we have discussed in the past that are included in the IT budget are upgrades to this, this room, okay? Um, and the upgrades to this room are, and I know they're there, 50,000, 50, right? Yeah, yeah. council chamber camera and broadcast upgrade, $50,000. That's uh, the, the spreadsheet line is 39. Um, some other things that we had talked about, um, line 44, Northwest Quadrant Traffic Surveillance. These were outdoor cameras in the Northwest uh, area of the township to monitor traffic and safety concerns that might be had in that area, schoolhouse cottontail that that part of the township um, there's there are some uh, you know video surveillance upgrade outdoor um, is is not included in this budget was included in last year's budget and is proposed for the 2024 capital for upgrades to outdoor cameras we updated upgraded all of the cameras on Hamilton Street in the last budget year um, so they're all to, to newer technology on the Hamilton Street cameras, as as well as Castleton Park was upgraded, um, and there's the proposal uh, that was spoken about last week in the Public Works Capital discussions 
was the installation of fiber optic from the senior center to Middlebush Park, which would enable uh, security cameras there, which had been discussed in the past, but had uh, kind of presented a difficulty as far as um, getting the data back here without using cellular, given the fact that it was so close. If we run fiber optic cable from the municipal complex to Middlebush Park, in addition to cameras, it'll also allow us to provide public Wi-Fi in the park, as well as card access to bathrooms at the concession stand, which would make them easier for people to use, lock and unlock without having to have someone go there and physically do it. Um, and so that's, that's one of the reasons why we look for that. And then the cameras that were included in the open space capital at the bottom are for um, Williams Park. The pool area was what uh, there was the, the the goal. I'm confused by something. The on the last page, you have the water total, and beneath that you have the total technology capital request, hundred and five thousand. The numbers don't add up for me. It's like you missed the seventy-five thousand. Yeah, I'm just good catch. Yeah. So you're talking about the water capital? Yeah, the, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. The numbers don't add up. So that 75 <laughs> is missing. It's just a calculation. Mm -hmm. So you need to add. So I could watch this. Yeah, something's wrong with that. Let me just clear this. I don't know, something's wrong with that. You figure it out. You're the, you're the IT guy. If we could get the IT guy here to help. Some parenthesis. Or maybe the economic development officer can. Yeah, the economic development guy, he'd forget that. I mean, you think the IT guy could figure out an Excel spreadsheet, just saying. It's, it's got to be adding a cross instead of, I don't, I'm not quite understanding what it's doing. All right, you can, you can. But yes, the, the answer is, I can do, watch this. It, it's 180,000. I did that in my head. Wow. I didn't need Excel to do that. <laughs> Simple numbers I'm good at. <laughs> so I have a question about the, the sound here in the council chambers. So I get mixed reviews currently. Mm -hmm. Some folks watching from home, my dear mother, mm -hmm. says that on her actual TV it's crackly and said 100 and she can hardly hear. And then our dear friend Bill Connell, who was supposed to be here waiting in the back till the very end, is at home watching. And he says it's great on streaming. So I asked my mom to test it on streaming, and she says it's a little better. Um, so, so streaming doesn't go through Comcast. Oh. It's going through the same equipment. It's just then once it leaves here, it has to go through Comcast equipment to get onto the television. So that's the difference. So yes, so strip. We did replace some equipment recently. So streaming was just replaced. We just upgraded that. That was right. part of last year's capital budget, which we just got done. So we can expect then this fifty thousand will help to make sure that the other piece with a regular tuner, which most people I don't know who what they use anymore, but some people would use the regular tuner at home with the cable box would be We're sure fixed hoping. in the next. That's year. the plan. Yes. Great. Great. Thank you. Yeah, the, the 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 TV broadcast sound has been a problem for several years now, and this this is this equipment replacement is intended to improve that part of the equation. So the large conference room fix, do we have to wait till the budget passes before? Uh, I'm working on that as we speak. <laughs> Must be two of you then. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any other questions about the IT capital budget? You know, the begin in, up in the beginning, you can bring me a mouse, I'm going to use it now. In the beginning, the, these these things like computer printers. Uh, this is the the Bobby. replacement. I mean, obviously, we have a large number of users on the network, and we have to replace computers. Um, they 
they reach end of life, operating systems can't be updated to current operating systems, Microsoft no longer supports, that's the kind of thing, same with printers. Um, <clears throat> Obviously. So, so what's the CBRS study? What's that? What's the C? We use acronyms all the time. What's it stand for? CBRS. It, oh, CBRS. It, it's CBRS it's, it's, study. Wait, nothing. That's what well, was taken out. So, so I'm looking at. Yeah, it's there, but it's not funded in 2020. It, it was uh, it, that was done in 2021. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. only the yellow column is, the, it, because things repeat, we just keep this I same see. spreadsheet rather than reinventing the wheel. Okay. Um, some things will reply, you know, every other year, and mm. so this just kind of gives you an overall look at the general expenditures between 2020 and what we anticipate right now for some of these expenses in 2024 that aren't being funded in 2023. Okay, never mind. Yep. Okay. No problem. Any others? Okay. You're not allowed to leave though, in case I need help with my Excel spreadsheets again. <laughs> um, but that is it for IT. Um, next we have, oh, look at that. You have my man, my, the township manager, who's he? Um, I will open up my budget here. My budget is proposed at $284,650. That's an increase of $2,000. Um, of my $284,650, $240,000 of it is the township's contingency in the event of an emergency. Um, for, for those who have been here for a while, they know that we removed the contingency budgeting out of department budgets many years ago and put it all in one central location. Um, it, has be, it has been useful in, in this past year. Um, you, you'll see that it, it actually had more than most years utilized. However, the truth is at one particular point in the past year, there was a rather large number of, of dollars used from that account that then were replenished once insurance provided the insurance payment. Um, when the sprinkler system broke in the senior center and flooded the senior center and caused all of the damage there, it was, it was up well over $100,000 in damage that was covered by insurance but had to be paid for initially before insurance reimbursed us. So that was one of the good uses of that money to have that in case of an emergency. And so uh, the only other increase that, that uh, the, the $2,000 increase is in office supplies, as was stated earlier um, by Cindy Bellinger and others. This just reflects increases in the things that we need to do our job. And so my department, well, Jennifer in my office is in charge of purchasing of all office supplies for all departments in the town. So that's centralized. Any questions on mine? Okay. Next we come to finance budgets. And this one you're just going to have to bear with me for a second while I open them all because there are many. These are where everything that doesn't belong in a department goes.
let's start with the simple thing. I'm just going to have to mop. I want to my I need a new computer. Where are I, I, I know. I, I know. And the mayor's going to say, you've been saying that for the last three months. And it's sitting in their office. I know. And I need a new computer. And Don't you need to put your glasses on, too? I, well, I, no, I, I'm, not, I, I, I need, I'm old, and I need a new computer. Um, I listen. You know, I have 2020 vision. Um, I'm, I'm just going to go down them. Some of these are relatively simple. This is actually the finance budget, though. Um, the finance department budget is uh, budgeted at $339,076. And that is um, a, an increase of about $5,171. It's, it's a decrease. I'm sorry, decrease. Yes, you're absolutely right, a decrease. Um, the, the bulk of this budget, which and the, and the biggest line in this budget, is contractual items. This pays for our, our finance department, the staffing of our finance department. PKF O'Connor Davies, formerly Hodge Lick and Morrison, um, provides our financial consulting services as well as staffing the three positions in, you know, obviously we have our CFO over here to my left and then the rest of the employees in that, de in that department are funded by um, this line, this contract. Um, another portion of that line is covered in the water budget that we talked about previously last week. Um, but that's really the costs associated with the finance department. So if there are no questions on that, I'm going to just go one by one on some of these budgets and they will seem kind of boring and, and but they need to. Because the rest of this meeting has been so exciting. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Mayor, if I could find a way to spice this up, I would find a way to spice it up. Um, that was a good you know, one. But I, it seems to me that coming from the one who is the, the most um, financially involved in this process, I'm surprised to hear you say that. But um, <laughs> All right, so let's talk about accumulated leave. Let's see if we can spice this up a little bit. Accumulated leave is the amount of money that we budget annually because, and, and Mr. Hodgelick might tell you later, um, there, there is an accounting principle that would assume that we have the amount of money budgeted and in reserve to cover the amount of accumulated leave that our employees have in the event that we're here today and gone tomorrow and we would have to pay all of that accumulated leave to our employees. Sound about right? Okay. Yeah. So we budget this money annually in the event that we would have to um, pay a significant amount of money in accumulated leave. That, that is, um, as I've been told, good accounting practice, and that's why this money is budgeted. See, he shook his head yes, so I finally got it right after 10 years. Perfect. So then why do we use 100% but we don't it goes really into reserve, just like when we looked at the snow budget and it says that it's 100% used, what's unused goes into a reserve account, and this is in a reserve. And he shook his head yes again. How much is in the reserve? Not enough to cover all of our ac accumulated leave. Why is he sitting over there? How come he didn't come over? Uh, he'll be coming over here in a little bit once we get done with these budgets. Then it's his turn. That's the exciting to part. Get, that's the exciting. No, that, that's the depressing part. Um, so okay. the, the next one is aid to ambulance companies. Budgeted at $58,500 and... Uh, that's flat from last year. This is the amount of money that we give to our volunteer first aid squads annually. The reason why it shows nothing at, on the year to date as of 10-31-22 is the monies were paid out to the volunteer f uh, first aid squads after October 31st. So you see in previous years it's at 100%. This is determined by percentage 
Um, so we take our volunteer first aid squads and we determine the number of calls that they answered in a year and what their percentage is of the whole is the percentage they get of the $58,500. Any questions on that one? Okay. Aid to fire companies, different. Not the same as aid to ambulance companies. <clears throat> so this is there this is to pay for um, the, the insurance that the township has on volunteer firefighters. There's insurance policies and this is the monies for that. They don't pay their own insurance? No, this is a life insurance policy. It's, 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 it's this was done. Oh, life I, insurance. I, okay. Yeah, Never I couldn't, mind. I couldn't mind. even tell you how long ago this is. Probably 50 okay. years ago. I thought you were talking yeah. about something else. No, no, okay. this is, yeah, no, the fire districts pay all of those insurance okay. costs. This is, this is for the other. Okay. Why is it down? Why is it down? Why have we not? Why, because if you notice, there's so there, this is another one of those reserves. We have sufficient funds in the reserves, and you see the year to dates. This is, you know, it, unfortunately, well, I'll say yes. Unfortunately, this is paid out when someone dies. All right, so it, we have sufficient funds in the reserve, and if there, if we so we can reduce the number uh, the number of dollars budgeted here. Okay. Auditor. Sorry. Yes. Dave A. Aid to the fire district. State gives us money for that, or no? That's us paying. It, it, it's it's yes. So we pay them, and they pay us. So it's a pay pastor. It's like the. It's similar to things like the board of education shared service agreement, where we get money from the board of education, but we have to budget it on both the appropriation side and the and the revenue side. That's this is one of those pastors, kind of like when when we uh, uh, will get to it at the very end um, when there's a tax lien. All right, and the tax lien redemptions they're on your agenda every meeting. There's tax tax title lien redemptions. We have to budget money to pay off the lien holders, and then we take the money who, from the people who are satisfying the lien. Money in, money out. That's what that state aid one is to. Thank you. Okay. Audit services. Um, this year is budgeted, and, and I'm going to turn to Kathy here. Um, the, the budget is at $71,750, which is a $33,750 increase over last year. In addition to paying the normal audit fee, there's a $10,000 con uh, contingency fee we put in there with all the grant money we've gotten. If we need to do a single audit, we put the, that's an additional fee we'd be charged. In addition, there's $25,000 put in because there was a lot of talk of possibly going to a bond sale this year to pay for part of our capital. And that 25000 covers the costs involved for the auditor and the financial consultant um, and the other experts that have to put together our bond package. So that contingency is in there also to pay for the, the possibility of the, a bond sale. When we sell bonds, we use Phoenix Advisors in the past to, to handle the bond sale itself. That's and, and it, you know, so we have the the bond council does all of the pre preparation of the bonds, but the actual bond sale is handled by an outside advisor. This one always makes me laugh. I'll show it just for. 
contingent two thousand dollars. As the one that has to be there. As the one that has to be there. <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman, for remembering that. <laughs> yes, that's the one that has to be there, and it's there because it has to be. And if you and it want, makes no sense. And it makes no sense, and I don't ask questions. Just put in the two thousand dollars every year. Debt service. There's a debt service 2023 and debt service. You want debt service 2023. <clears throat> That's the overall debt service. Debt service this year is um, at $3,046,925, which is a decrease of $37,400. This is just, we had a decrease in um, principal or interest, I'm assuming interest. Both. Both, but one of the reasons we were able to save money this year is there are rules that say when you get certain contributions that go to capital projects that you previously bonded for, you have to use them to pay off the debt. So when we got money from the library to go towards their space in the youth center, we had to hold that money and apply it to the bond that we have. So That's that right, saved yes. us $462,000 this year. All right, so the, that, exactly. The library's contribution to the cost of the uh, youth center goes directly to debt service. In addition to that, we had a DOT. Because we bonded. We had a DOT grant that we received for the road resurfacing on DeMott from Anwell to New Brunswick. We received two hundred and sixty-one thousand dollars. We can't reinvest that in the road. We have to use that to pay for the bond debt that we use to finance yep. the road. So that actually saves us uh, quite a bit of money in this year's budget. Over seven hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars came off the interest that we would have been paying out of pocket. We were able to use those two amounts we received to reduce our debt service. Okay. Good on the debt. Moving on. General legal. General legal shows it currently budgeted at five hundred and five thousand dollars, which is flat from twenty twenty two. I will tell you that and, and to be transparent, this number may change. This number in legal services is two specific <clears throat> legal services, general legal and tax appeal uh, legal. Um, and given the, the current climate with litigation and, and what we're dealing with as far as litigation, I will be having a conversation with the township attorney about what his anticipation is regarding um, costs in 2023, 2023 to defend us in those cases. Um, so that I'll have a conversation as soon as I can get him on the phone um, about this. And then we have a financial uh, oversight meeting this upcoming Monday where this can be a topic of discussion. Um, and then we'll have obviously the budget prepared for introduction at the first meeting of April and that will reflect whatever the, the, the determination is that I feel we need to put in that line before I turn the budget over to council. So hopefully I'll have an answer for at least financial oversight on Monday. Um, this may be sufficient, I'm not, I, I can't say. One thing I'm, I'm confident in um, in 2023 is that um, much like in 2022, uh, the amount of money necessary to defend the township in tax court has been far less than it has been in previous years. And I don't anticipate that number being high, so we may be able to leave the number there with an anticipation of decreased um, legal needs on the tax appeals. Okay. So if there are no questions on general legal, 
I'll move on to, well, you know, I'm going to skip grants and matching funds because there's nothing there. So the, the grants and matching funds is some, if we needed to budget for a matching grant, which we don't have going into calendar year 2023, there was, we, we have, a, we have a, a reserve for that, that there's sufficient funds, so there's no money budgeted in, in that this year. Interlocal health is our contract with Somerset County to provide health services, uh, health department services. That's budgeted at 722,650, um, which is a $14,169,000 increase um, that we have a multi-year contract with Somerset County and it calls for an annual 2% increase and that's the 2% reflected in the, uh, in the, the difference. Liability insurance. Liability insurance is um, our GIF assessment. Uh, the GIF assessment is at um, $1.15 million, which is an increase of, I guess, about 75,000, right? 75,866. Cost of doing business. That's what our that's so that is our general liability and, and casualty insurance, car insurance, and what have you. And then um, the workers' compensation at fifty thousand um, is flat over the last several years because that's that's the that's our what our workers' comp is uh, is capped at. So, are there any questions on the the GIF funding? not library tax so while this is another one of those money in money out we collect the tax but then we also have to budget it in our municipal budget um, the library tax this year is at four million four hundred seventy eight thousand five hundred eighty nine dollars um, and that's an increase of $703,159 um, from last year. I read a question about the library tax. Go ahead. Um, I know it's statutory how that whole mm -hmm. set it, that formula. Yep. Um, is it required of the board of the library if they chose not to keep that percentage at the highest at the rate it is in other words are they allowed to lessen the rate that no. is based no it, it, is, it, 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 by law when you have a public library that formula calls for and that's the law says you okay. have to do that now the second part of that would be and i wholeheartedly support our library system but Basically, when property values go up and assessments go up, the amount you give to a library goes up because it's based on an assessment value, correct? It, it's based on, yes. Okay, and I remember years ago it came up. I don't know what happened about it, but they do have the option, though, uh, as a board to give back, put back, send back any amount of money to the general fund balance if there's a larger than normal increase because of the larger than normal increase we've seen in assessment values might might be the case all I can say is without speaking for the library I'm not speaking they for went the from the main library to having now two satellite libraries right. so I'm sure in cost of increase that 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 number is probably more in line with the I'm necessary sure they have. I'm just saying like costs. say but that's an option that they don't have an option to change the percentage but they have an option to with the funds to do what they choose as far as ever in fact, give they're required to, to give us a certain percentage of their surplus unless Maybe they that's have what I was capital hearing. projects planned. And they put a presence in the youth center and they're building another satellite location. Um, if they were not, they would be required to give back a certain percentage of their surplus. I, maybe that's what we're talking about. And again, I support, and especially these projects you just mentioned, it's just at a certain point, if there's not something to spend the money on, they we can. We watch that. Okay. So 
Good. That's good to hear. There's clarity. So they actually have to at a certain point, or it's discretionary, but as long as you're using it for good capital projects, or what most people, I think, feel are, then they use it for that. Okay. So yes, they have a capital fund, and, and that's where they pay for things like improvements to the building or expansions like they've done. Well, I really support about that. Thank you. We're talking about a million two for the roof that needs to uh, fix that, that domed roof, which I sat out there and was against. <laughs> um, I remember, Mayor. <laughs> it's, um, it's causing heating problems or yeah. air, air conditioning problems. It's causing heating, and it's just time to repair it, place it. So there's a million two going. No, no, I'm not. Be clear here. I'm not no, yeah. suggesting any of their expenses are involved. And just when you have that large of an increase over years in the assessment values, sometimes it gets to the point where they don't need to spend it. But wise investments, that, from what I hear. Thank you. It's just a formula I wanted to clarify. Okay. The next one I have up is the public defender. The public defender shows a decrease of $18,000 from $35,000 in calendar year 22 to $17,000 in calendar year 2023. This does not reflect a decrease in the amount to be paid to the public defender, if, if, and I have it up on the screen if you want to look at the television. Um, the $31,000 is still, uh, it, so, there is a trust, again, for that money that people pay in, when they obtain the public defender and they have to pay a fee. That money goes into a trust. Um, it's anticipated that for 2023 there are sufficient funds between the trust and the amount to be budgeted to pay all of the, um, the fees associated with the public defender, the alternate public defender, and pretrial detention hearings. So, what that means is people paid into, they, they actually paid for their public defender and we collected the fees. So that's the 28058 cents. Yeah. Um, that's your little note there. Right, public defender, yeah, that's exactly right, yes. So, so the answer is there's sufficient funds in the trust to pay the hourly fee for the public defender and all of the other things that he does. There's also an alternate public defender as well as their pre-detention uh, pre hearings that they're required to attend um, with budgeting 17000 Next up. salary adjustment. So this is one where I'm going to ask for Kathy to comment here because it seems as if there's no money spent on salary adjustment. Basically we budget $100,000 in that account every year and it's basically for retro raises. Um, but only if they're paid in that existing year. More often than not, by t the time the retro hits, it's, it's, we're past the current year, and then it gets charged to the, the reserve that we have. So what happened, exactly. So what, what that means in short is, if a contract doesn't settle within a year of it expiring, the retroactive pay gets paid out of a reserve account as opposed to this account. This is budgeted in the event that it does get settled. So like right now I'm in contract negotiations with one of the unions whose contract expired on December 31st of 2022. If I'm able to settle that contract, the retroactive pay would only go back to January 1st and that would come out of this budget. But you have to have a budget line in order to to, to do that, it, yeah. right. Th that's why you have the, t the, t the contingent fund. Right. You can increase it, but you have to have the budget line exactly. in existence. Okay. Somerset County Improvement Authority lease, SCIA lease, 2023. The 
prices for our solar panels. The lease this year is $111,523.66, which is an increase of $4,293.28. That is what we now have. Um, it's the energy lease for all of the solar on the buildings. Okay. We used to also lease police vehicles, but we don't, haven't done that in many years. That's why that's still in that description. Uh, statutory expenditures, pensions. Look at my Microsoft wants to update. This year our pensions are at $7,512,505, which is an increase of 349341 That's $60,640 for public employee retirement system and $293,701 increase in the police and fire retirement system. And in addition to that, we have money proportionately budgeted out of water for PERS. For those employees who work in the water department, their pump, yeah, exactly, their pension is paid for out of the water utility. So there's another $330,000 that's being paid out of water. This is one of the bigger increases, obviously. And we have no choice. Nope, that's why it says statutory. So yep. there's not much of a discussion there, it's more advisory. Tax appeals refund. This is the money that we budget annually to pay for um, either settlement or, or um, findings of tax court uh, and that are in the favor of the, um, the litigant, not us. The, uh, when we lose, no other way to put it. When we lose in tax court, this is where the money comes from. Um, and I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so that I can see the numbers without moving the columns. There we go. So for the last three years, 2021 and 22, we have budgeted $750,000 annually. Um, in 2020, we paid out a significantly large amount of money for um, ta tax court cases. Um, in particular, um, 200 Cottontail, I believe, was in 2020. Um, and uh, I think that was the big one. That, that was the one that was over a million dollars in, in, in change for 2020. You can see that in 2021 and 2022, we've had much lower numbers. Um, our reserve right now stands at just a little over $2.9 million because the monies that don't get expended in this line go into reserve. Um, I, we've spoken with Mr. Carabelli about what his forecast is for tax court cases in uh, 2023, uh, and we are very comfortable in budgeting a minimal amount of money in this line for 2023, given the fact that we're now at $2.9 million in reserve. And we feel comfortable doing that based on his anticipation of those cases that will come to court at ta in state tax court this year. So is this reserve different from the fund back? This is the reserve, just like the snow reserve, and that it, they, these are where the monies that go unexpended go yeah. into a reserve account and can be held for future use for that particular purpose, right? No. Why the weird number 5,486? I'm betting if I asked the finance officer who put that number in there, it's a percentage of something. You have to have a number there in order to in case you have to pay it out. And by using that number, it brought the reserve to a nice round number of 2.930. See? So there well, you have it. Numbers. I knew she would have some logic in her mind that it, and that doesn't surprise me. There's medicine for people. <laughs> <laughs> That's why people like me 
do the job I do. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, so that's the tax appeal refund, which obviously shows a significant decrease of 744000 and change down. Tax lien foreclosure, this is the one I referenced earlier. It's money in, money out. It's $50,000. It's the amount of money that we need to use to pay those people who um, are lien holders so that then we can collect the money from the taxpayer who had the lien. Money in, money out. And if you really want to be bored, Mayor, Let's have a discussion about the reserve for uncollected taxes. My favorite part, the I line. knew it. See, I was going to skip over it because I just felt like I <laughs> should, but the reserve for uncollected taxes. Would you like to give a, a tutorial on what the reserve for uncollected taxes is, Mr. Mayor? Well, it's money that we have to put into the budget by formula so that we have money in case people don't pay their taxes. That's, I, okay. We have to pay others, right? Right. Yeah. So we, we have to have this reserve for the uncollected taxes, those that we don't we collect, so we make sure board. we can pay the people who we collect taxes for. We can't. It's kind of silly. It, it's, a, it's a guarantee, kind of. It's an insurance policy. The way the state looks at it is they have to make sure that a municipality doesn't spend their fund balance down so far that they didn't have the money to pay those other people that you collect taxes for. That's another reason to have a fund balance that has um, Someone, some health. An opponent from the other party once running argued, why are we doing this every year? <laughs> because we never spend it. Because we have money in our surplus or oop, fund balance, so we never spend it. That's because we have to. And it was, it was, I will tell you that I took the finance officer classes and I took this budget class where, where they, they teach you to do this. And there were more people in that class having a difficult time understanding this than any other function of budgeting that was taught in that class. It, it doesn't make much sense. But I guess it made sense for towns who weren't responsible financially. And that is the end of all of the operating budgets. Um, I have asked Mr. Hodgley to come join me up here. I, I am, yes. Um, thank you. Um, I've asked Mr. Hodgley, our financial consultant, to come here and talk about the things that he needs to talk about related to our 2023 budget. Good evening, everyone. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. So Thanks for less. Oh, yeah, my goodness. Well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> so, actually, I'm here to speak about the uh, results of your operations for the year 2022 and what that significance has on the 2023 budget. Uh, we'll start off with the water, and, and basically, both the water and in the current fund, general fund, it, it, you kind of met expectations. Uh, the water fund started out the year 2022 at just under $8 million. There was a budget utilization of that fund balance of $3.6 million, and you made back just under $2 million, uh, you know, based on what you collected in your water rent revenues and other items. So your, your water fund balance basically dropped from um, almost $8 million down to approximately $6 million. Now, we kind of expected that based on the utilization factor of the fund balance and that you haven't had any kind of water rate increases in quite some time, which is something that's obviously been on the drawing board and I think it's going to happen if it hasn't happened. Already. Okay, very good. So that is the expectation. It's, it's, you know, you're not in dire straits by any means, but you, we've had a, seen a decline of the uh, water fund balance, and that's why you need to make some, do some action with respect, with respect to the water rates. Um, just moving on to the current fund budget. Again, as planned, uh, the, the current fund, general fund uh, balance had grown over the years. Uh, to actually just under $29 million at the end of 12-31-21 you know, uh, or beginning of the year 2022. So the plan was to utilize a good portion of that fund balance to bring it down to the levels that uh, Mayor Council had decided it really is a, you know, a good healthy budget, but not exorbitant by any stretch of the imagination, or, or should not be exorbitant. 
Uh, so the utilization of the fund balance in the 2022 budget was uh, just under $14 million. Um, based on the way things transpired during the year, there was a regeneration of your fund balance. Which is something that happens every year based on variances between revenues, you know, budgeted revenues and it realized, and budgeted appropriations versus expenditures uh, over a two-year period. And so your fund balance actually dropped down now from just under $29 million to just below $22 million. So now that was kind of planned, but now we're at a point where now we're going to have to be a little more judicious in terms of the utilization of that fund balance. So in structuring the 2023 budget, that's something that the Finance Committee has been talking about and is going to make some decisions or conclusions, I guess, the next meeting. Um, but, you know, I think the, the plan was to try to maintain your fund balance somewhere between $20 million to $2022 million, and you, you, know, you kind of accomplished that through the 2022-year process. Um, so uh, as we get into the 2023 budget introduction, that's going to be part of the focus or, you know, main part of the focus. That's basically what I came here to report. I mean, in terms of your variances, your, your miscellaneous revenues were uh, above, uh, you realized more about by $600,000. Delinquent taxes were a little lower. Current taxes were a little lower realization than previous years. That's a primarily a, a factor, the fact that in some years you have greater amount of added taxes than you had in 2022. Therefore, the realization number on your current taxes was not as robust as it has been in previous years. I just want to insert um, something right here on that. So the interesting thing about what, what Andy just said is that while our collected taxes were down, adds were down, but the rate of collection was up. What that tells me is that while there were a slightly higher number of taxpayers paying their taxes. The ones who weren't paying their taxes are probably, in some cases, pay much more. So that's why the total dollar amount was down slightly, but yet the percentage of, of properties collected were higher. So that, you know, that could mean any number of things, but it could mean that we have some big properties that didn't pay their taxes. You know, so, and uh, not, not to speculate, but we have some big vacant buildings and they may not have paid their taxes and that could result in a decrease in the revenue collected but still show an increase in the percentage of properties collected from. Make sense? Yes, okay. Because I, I, I have reported in the past that our collection rates have been good, and our collection rates have been good as far as a percentage of the whole. You know, there were concerns through COVID that we would see a significant dip in the amount of people paying their property taxes. What I will report to you is that we, have, we are holding the line and, and seeing collection rates that have just increased, not in a small amount, less than a percentage point, but still haven't decreased, which was a, a major concern in 2020 and 2021 as we work through the pandemic. So that's about all I was planning to present this evening. If there's any questions on where you where you stand with the fund balance or what have you. But we still have some work to do in terms of the Finance Committee putting the final numbers together. Um, but again, you know, you're you're still. I mean, there, there's towns that wish they were Franklin Township, and uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I w certainly wish to congratulate Mayor and Council. The stewardship over the township funds has been excellent over the past years, and continue to expect that to be. But um, you know, like I said, you're having a 22 million dollar fund balance. There's are so many towns that wish they were in that position. Yeah, when I, when I talk to other mayors, their eyes get big. So you're going to be at the next FOC meeting. Yes, yes. Monday? And, and, and Kathy has told me that we should be in a position on Monday to make a lot of the decisions and, and we'll have totals for you on uh, o overall OE with the uh, salary factored into it um, 
And the, I think the, the biggest discussion that we need to have on Monday is the method of funding for our capital projects and finalize the capital budget. And I, I think that otherwise, as far as the OE and salary budgets are concerned, we should be in good condition based, based upon, and in all honesty, what Andy just said, you know, this council's continued, um, you, you have been driven and you have driven me to to maintain fiscal responsibility and because of that fiscal responsibility we're now in a position where we can be fiscally responsible and 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 do what the mayor says all the time spend the tax money that we tax people for and not and not uh, you know tax and don't spend that that's the worst thing and we're now showing that this is where we're at we're we're at a number where um where we're not over taxing but we're not over saving either but, oh. but we have the health insurance fund information well mind. the health insurance fund is off in the future that. yeah that okay. has nothing to do with this year's budget we we are no okay. we've already started you know listen we're into Aetna for three months now we're we have a contract okay. with them to okay. provide health care benefits for this year oh, good. what okay. will happen yes so we don't need to be bogged down that. with that okay. this budget is reflective of the amount of money needed to pay our health care benefits for year 2023 2024 is my concern we need to look to the future and my concern is that without a cap that Aetna had for 2023 that we might see significant increases in health care benefits for 24 so we need to start that work now which is that's what Raven and I and Stuart will do okay thanks okay any other questions from council for the manager or our financial people. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. Guess it's time to ask the big question. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Be well, Franklin. <laughs>